Patient demographics are the most important thing that can happen in terms of a office being successful with their billing and using their time wisely. They say that 90% of errors occur during the time that a patient's information is being entered into the billing system. That means that at the front desk, when a patient turns in their registration packet along with a copy of their insurance card and or their insurance card information, let's assume that the patient has entered all of that information correctly. That information handed off to the person that's responsible to enter in that information. If there is a disconnect and there are errors. Based on those errors, causes hiccups and billing issues for the billing and claims department. I know that you may think, oh, that's so silly, but it is actually true. Especially because everything is going electronic, it is very, very important that every single thing matches the system that you are sending the claims to. The patient's name should be identical to the name that's on the insurance card. The claim address should be correct. The ID number should be correct. The date of birth should be correct. The sex should be correct. Those are huge things that while going through the clearinghouse from your particular billing system to the insurance company will cause a claim to deny and or reject. Now, each system that you may work on here or elsewhere may be different. It may look different, it may have different features, but ultimately entering in patient information is all the same. So we're going to provide an example. So in my system, you go to manage patient, add new patient, be assigned a position which we are doing now Once a physician is assigned, you want to make sure that the name is spelled exactly the way it is on the insurance card or registration form. You want to make sure that the date of birth is correct, that you've chosen the correct sex, that you provide a valid address with city and zip. Now you want to make sure that you limit the amount of commas and periods and hashtag signs for apartments because those are some things that can trigger the system not to allow the claim to go through. You want to make sure that the city and the zip code match. There are some times in rural areas or when new cities and zip codes are being developed that you will need to use an older zip code, but for the most part, the city and the zip code should all match. You want to make sure that you always get a phone number and a backup phone number, just in case 
their phone number is disconnected, you can always track them, whether it's for patient care or for financial responsibility. I always suggest that you put down a email address, especially if the patient is younger in age. Um, I know that a lot of systems will do email reminders and or text message reminders. So you do want to make sure that you always get an email address and a valid phone number and backup phone number. Their employer information. This information is important because when you are dealing with a group policy, a policy that the patient has through her job, knowing that employer's name is helpful when claims deny so that you can be transferred to the right group if the plan is group specific. Always, if they have a contact person, you want to take down their information for emergencies or past due balances. In some cases, a next of kin is important. The next big thing is insurance, making sure you are choosing the correct insurance information. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, look at here. You see there's an Aetna, Aetna, Aetna. The claim address is different. You have a Maribin. You have two different pair IDs for a Maribin. See, these are the details that would be the reason that if you chose the wrong Aetna, and you associated the ID number to the wrong Aetna type would be reasons why the claim would deny. So again, you do want to make sure that you are looking on the back of that insurance card to make sure that that information is correct. If they have any authorizations, you want to put the authorization information on file and then you want to update the account. Now, a lot of the times in the medical field for obstetrics and gynecology or maternity or family practice, or really any time you're at a practice where multiple family members will attend, it is important that you will correct account. I'll provide you an example. And this is the way that we handle infant births and family members with favored medical billing and their billing. So you would select the patient would go to and then down here, dependent information. Listing your patients here eliminates you having to create an entirely new account for that dependent. So when mom has a baby, you go in. and you add baby's information, the sex. In this case, it would be child. If it was the husband or wife, you would put spouse. 
if it was the grandparent or niece or significant other, you would put other relationship. In this case, again, it's child. And then you hit add dependent. So that information can be updated. And then we will go to our patient area and find the name and you will see that because we were able to add the information as a dependent, we did not have to go through as many steps as we did before when we were setting up the account for the mom or policy holder. And there they go. Now that is entering in patients in Office Ally, being able to understand patient demographics and the importance of inputting that data as accurate as possible, as it will be one of the reasons why a claim may not pay or process. Thank you.